do that. Let's do, we'll do a perspective of the same view. And I, I will use a straight edge. I kind of want you guys to sketch a little bit more, but we'll, I'll do a straight edge. So the first thing I'm going to do to recreate that perspective, and I'll, I'll reference the actinometric because I think you can tell, is I'm going to identify this front edge first. So here's the question. Do I want to see the top of the object or the bottom of the object? I kind of have to make some choices, you know, when I start doing a perspective. So let's, we're going to try and recreate this view as much as possible, but in a perspective format. So I am a fan of drawing our horizon line first. And then I get my two vanishing points. And again, you guys keep in mind as I draw, I'm going to draw a little darker so it shows up a little bit better for the camera. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw what we call my, my true height line that's right in the center. So I'm going to create, that's sort of the, the foundations of starting that perspective. So basically what I've done is I've identified this line that's closest to us. And then I'm going to do it uh, a little bit like Kyle did and, and leave all this, the what we call construction lines. I'm going to ghost it in pretty, pretty solid. So from one of those lines, I'll bring down the front of the object. And then from the other vanishing point, I'll bring down the other piece. So what I've just identified now is this line and this line. I'm gonna, that's going to be the base or the bottom of that, of that shape. And then from there, I'm going to try and start to develop some heights. And, and sometimes it's kind of nice to use tick marks. I know I've got two blocks on top of each other, so I'm going to do a tick mark and another tick mark. We want those to be fairly even so that they're the same size. And then I will go back and run those lines back to the vanishing point. Don't let this sort of freak you out either, because the same way you did the isometric, these lines are the same, right? And it, sometimes it's easier when they're parallel to each other. The only difference is these lines that drift back at that 30 degree angle in an ISO or an axonometric don't do that. They go all the way to the vanishing point. So they kind of tilt towards each other a little bit more. So I'll do the same thing on this side. Actually, the straight edge is kind of nice. It speeds up, up the process. And then I can come back in and draw my vertical line straight up. And visually just trying to keep it as square as I can. So there I've already got in now my front, my front two blocks. So I've got the block that disappears off to the left. And then I've got two that are coming up sort of to the right side. And those can be fairly tricky, not terribly. The bottom one on the left is probably the easiest one. And here's the thing that gets tricky with perspectives. That block, this block over here, with an axonometric view, it's going to be the same size as the front block, right? We're seeing the object all to scale to the same size, not in a perspective. In a perspective, as things get away further from us, they get smaller and smaller. Like if you're on the highway and you see an F-150 and it's six feet in front of you, and there's an F-150 200 feet in front of you, which one is bigger? Same size, right? But one looks really little way out there, you know? It's the same way they filmed that movie Elf. Have you guys ever seen the movie Elf? Yeah, it was not filmed with like CGI stuff. They all that that whole movie was filmed with um, how they staged people. So like everybody else would be far away, and then um, Will Ferrell or whatever would be really close to the camera. So he appeared like a giant, you know. So the way they staged that, it was basically this principle, right? So instead of having the full length for that back square, I'm going to make this one just a, a little bit smaller. And then to get to this back line. Again, parallel to these front lines, that just goes back to the vanishing point. So we'll take that thing back to our vanishing point. I'm kind of ghost in that vanishing point. And then we've got the last thing is the two line, the two cubes up on the other side in the back. So the one thing that I do know is this height of this cube and the height of the cube above it, those should be the same because they're in the same plane, so to speak. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and run this line up a little bit higher. And I want these two to be fairly similar in height. And I'll send that back to the vanishing point. And then I can outline the sort of front of this cube, right? So what we'll do is 
draw the other vanishing point to create the back of the front side. And we've got the top of the other cube. And then again, the other side, we know it's, it should be about the same size as this one. So we're going to come back in and we can identify the top of that. Now, here's the crazy part, right? See how I can see in my axonometric, I can see the top of the, of the cube really clearly. Like these tops should all be identical. Notice what's happening here. How much of the top of this cube can I see? Not much, right? It's super tight. I'm really glad I have a straight edge because I couldn't do this freehand. <laughs> Not that good. Um, I'm going to run my vanishing point all the way over there, and you can see how just absolutely tiny, tiny sliver of the top I can see. And it is just barely kind of getting that top piece in there because it is so close to my horizon. Anything that gets close to this horizon line is going to basically just disappear. Once we have that sketched in, I'm going to do the same thing. So I've got my super light lines, like my construction lines. Now I'm going to come back in and I'm going to make my object lines stand out a little bit more. At this point, definitely don't do the straight edge thing. It'll have a lot more character. And you can see it's, going, it's starting to show up a little bit. I missed that one, didn't I? And now I'm going to go back and do my profile line. Go for those crossing corners. I broke my pencil pad. I'm going to just darken this one up a little bit, just like we did before to separate that. Now, all of a sudden, you've got your shape in perspective, which is a, a much different, much different look than the axonometric, right? It actually feels like like it's disappearing. It's, it's more how we see the world. In pers well, it's exactly how we see the world. We see it in perspective. So these tend to be a little bit closer to the reality of how we see things. Does that make sense? Not too bad? Fairly reasonable?